In today's video, we have an expert who's gonna show us how we can easily make a map using an entry-level drone like this Mini 3 Pro. Best part is, you don't have to spend a single dollar. Which is good, because I don't have a single dollar, all I have is this 20. That'll work just fine. I thought you said this wasn't gonna cost anything. It doesn't cost them anything. I thought we were friends, Jerry. We're working on it, man, we're working on it. You just bought a little bit of friendship. Okay, <laughs> let's get to it. So if you didn't already know, this is Jared. He's the lead instructor for our mapping, surveying, and modeling classes at Pilot Institute. We just released a brand new LiDAR class, which is designed to build off of our previous mapping classes that teach you the fundamentals and the foundations of mapping. This new LiDAR class, we are taking everything to the next level. I assume that because we're doing the LiDAR class, our next class is gonna be the TruthDAR classes. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's probably not gonna happen. Wow, way to kill my dreams, Jared. <laughs> I have never made a map with a drone, but I have flown the Mini 3 Pro, and you're saying that we can make a pretty decent map just using that, right? Yeah, you know, most any drone is capable of making a map. DJI has released an SDK with something as small as the Mini 3, and with that open SDK, we can utilize a few different flight programs that will allow us to plan a mapping mission, which takes all the guesswork out of it and makes it super easy to get started. That sounds great. So I'm excited. We're going to put the, the Mini 3 up. You're going to make the map, but I'll, I'll support you. Yeah, yeah, you, you can hand me the water when we need it. But I call, I call the eight tool. Oh! That's me. All right, let's get started. Okay, well, the very first thing that you wanna do when you're mapping is you want to understand what the area is that you're gonna map. We've chosen this beautiful park here. We have previously gone into Google Earth and created a KML. A KML is just a very lightweight file, basically a polygon. It's a shape that is an area that we want to fly. So we, we don't have to do that. It's not 100% necessary. We did it for continuity. We're gonna load that KML into our flight planning software. We've chosen Maps Made Easy. The app itself is called Map Pilot Pro that you download. They have a great guide on their website and it'll walk you through exactly how to go through that download process and install the app on your control or onto our smartphone device, which in this case needs to be an Android. Because Greg, back me up on this, Androids are far superior to iPhone. <laughs> if that's a bunch of bullshit coming from Ben. Yeah, I don't think so. So, <laughs> and then what about this guy, the DJI RC? So the DJI RC has the screen built in, uh, but it does not allow third-party apps to be installed on it. So unfortunately we can't use that in this instance. I'm just gonna throw away this. That yeah, there's a trash can over there, so. Okay, but uh, so we've got our app installed. Let's jump into the app real quick and we're gonna plan our mission. One thing that we need to do once we've installed our, our map planning is we need to close out of DJI Fly. We don't wanna just close out, we actually wanna do a force quit on oh. that app. So hold down on DJI Fly and hit force stop. We don't want the DJI app controlling or talking to the drone in any way. Okay. We're gonna give all of that control over to the Map Pilot Pro. We're gonna come back here, go to Map Pilot Pro. And if we go into File Manager, we can see I've already downloaded that Pilot Institute LiDAR map, and we're showing that KML on our base map. Right. So it is a good guide for us to know how big do we make our map. So we're gonna jump in. Oh, there it goes, found our Mini 3 Pro. Our KML is on the park, and that's our, roughly our boundary that we're gonna follow. Gotcha. Our altitude, we're gonna bump that up to about 177. And and why are you doing that? What What's the purpose of choosing the altitude? How does that help? We are deciding how much detail we want in our map. So okay. the lower we fly, and remember, it's just a camera in the air. So mm -hmm. the closer you are to your subject or the ground, uh, the more detail you're gonna get. But unfortunately, the smaller your footprint is on the ground, which means you have to fly more flight lines, which gotcha. takes longer. Our overlap, so overlap is, is how much each flight line is overlapping the previous flight line. It's essential when we're making a map because that's how the software stitches it together. Now natively in like the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro, there are waypoint missions that you can program in it. Right. But because of the overlap, is that why we right. can't do it that yeah. way? Yeah, overlap is something that's a calculated value. So yeah. the footprint of the image on the ground changes with the altitude that you're flying. So mm -hmm. we might know what how big our footprint is on the ground at 150 feet, but the moment we change it to 175 feet, that footprint gets bigger, which means we fly less. So that's kind of good. We generally like to dial this into 80% front overlap and 70% side to side. I think this app is limiting us a little bit on the side to side and it's gonna keep us at about 75%. Then we could choose how fast we want the drone to go. Generally, we want the drone to go as fast as it can. Okay. Um, because we wanna be done quicker. 
Sure. But if you have low light situations, you might want to slow that drone down a little bit so you have a nice sharp picture. You are a photographer first, remember, when you're taking a map. Now we need to actually draw our map to match our KML that's beneath it. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna press and hold to get our first point, press and hold to get our second point. And once we get that third point, you see our waypoints start to show up. And it's always do that path. It's kind of like the line at, at the bank. And that is definitely um, a standard in the mapping world. So mm -hmm. you're going to get very used to that shape. It's a lawnmower pattern, we like to call it. It's okay. that back and forth. But that's what ensures that we have really good overlap from one flight path to the other. So gotcha. you see, we have three points here. And when we want to create that fourth point, we're actually going to hit in that, that middle point between the two, and it allows us to create a new waypoint. Pretty easy. So we're gonna zoom in here, make sure we've got everything. And we're just, we always like to overshoot our boundaries just a little bit, and we're dialed in there. We're gonna save our mission plan. Mission planned and saved, okay? Now, it does tell us about how many acres we've got. We've got one 8.3 acres. Okay. It's about 1.25 miles. So how long is this mission gonna take? Does it tell us there? It should take about five minutes to fly this map. And we would expect to take about 81 images. Can you last five minutes? Yeah, we may need a break for a snack, is all I'm saying. Sna snacks first, but sunglasses, check. Right. Okay, so now we are ready to fly and we're going to hit this little airplane icon. It has a little slide out and we're gonna hit upload. Now, let's talk about this real quick. You see this uh, little important message show up. We're not actually uploading a Waypoint flight mission. We're using virtual sticks to actually virtually control the drone. With other drones, you might push a, a mission to the drone and it saves to the drone and then the drone will fly it. Well, this one needs to maintain connection because it definitely is going to be controlling it just as if you were flying it with sticks. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna do a much better job for you. Okay. So we're gonna hit okay. It has set the connection fail safe behavior to home. We are not doing um, terrain awareness on this mission. And then return to home is gonna be fine. It's initializing. So it is telling us to carefully inspect the blue line, make sure that we're gonna be good to fly it. We're looking around at our surroundings. We're kind of on a hilltop here. Mm -hmm. So I believe we're good to go. Now we just hit takeoff. Okay, well, as that is cruising, it's gonna work its way across this map. While it's flying, let me ask you this. It, it's the, the Mini 3 Pro and it is a little bit windy out here. How do you think it's gonna hold up? It's really about the profile of the drone and oh. they hold up pretty well in the wind. Now the Mini 3 Pro has those smaller batteries and the bigger batteries. Yep. And we actually like the bigger batteries because it adds a little more weight and a little more stability to it. Another thing, we have Watson Lake right behind us, right? How does that water work with mapping? Water is a constantly moving surface. Mm -hmm. And when we are trying to stitch together a map, we are trying to identify one point in one image and then the same point in an adjacent image, which is terribly difficult to do in moving water. So yeah. we do have trouble stitching water. We're generally pretty good around the edges of water. Um, but if we're gonna be flying into the middle of the lake, we would be wanting to fly higher so that we get more of the, the edges of the water and things like that. We've got the entry level, the, the Mini 3 Pro up there. You brought with you the M300. What are the advantages of something like that? Those have better cameras on them, so we can fly a little bit higher and get the same or better resolution, especially with the P1 camera that we brought. We're gonna have excellent resolution so we can fly higher, ideally covering more ground with less time. They also have real-time kinematic corrections that they can receive. So we can connect to an RTK service and it will send corrections to the drone so that the drone knows exactly where it is in time and space. With these consumer grade drones, we're using consumer grade GPS. We're accurate to within about 15 feet. Okay. All right, drone's back and we did it. Yeah. By we, I mean you. you well, did. it was easy, I earned that $20, I guess. But you don't have to spend a thing, guys. Try this with the drones that you have. The Mini 3 Pro is an excellent drone for this type of work. Next step, I guess, is now we gotta go do the hard part. And that's processing this data on the computer. Hey guys, welcome to the computer. Let's put those images that we captured with that Mini 3 Pro into some software that's gonna make a beautiful map that you can start using right away. We've got our JPEG images. These are straight right off of the SD card that we pulled out of the drone. We're gonna use a program that's called Web ODM or Open Drone Map. And what's unique about this program 
is it's free. It's awesome. The free version does require you to do some complicated installs. There's some great tutorials on the WebODM website to walk you through that installation process. They also have a $65 one-time cost to download an installer that you just literally double click and it will install it for you. So if you get frustrated and it's worth that $65 to you, go ahead and do that. I know that's what I did. We're gonna open up WebODM here. And the dashboard, as you can see, has a couple of projects. We already pre-processed this data, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it again. Cool. Oh, God. Gosh, man. Don't mind me, Jared. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, watch over your shoulder from right here. That's, that's not awkward at all, man. Okay, so we're just going to type in a project name, and then over here, we're gonna select images, jump to our mapping data, and here we have our Mini 3 Pro. There are those JPEG images. I'm just gonna select them all. And we're going to choose our options. So they have default options for how to set this up. You could go high resolution, fast ortho, few other options here. If you wanted to, you can go in here and read these tool tips that are gonna give you a little bit of information on the different settings that you can tweak and really create a customized processing solution that fits your specific requirements. But we're gonna stick with the default mode we're gonna hit review and we're gonna start processing. And folks, it's that easy. WebODM is an excellent source for beginner mappers to get into mapping and see what your drone can do. So let's fast forward and see how long it takes to process and I'll show you what those results look like. It looks like it's done, Ben. 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 Is it done? Oh God. Ben, you have to stop doing that. Yes, it's done. Man, it only took 28 minutes hey, to map all of that together. That Can you believe that? was pretty quick, yeah. It's pretty impressive, pretty impressive. So the first thing we do, we're gonna click on view map and it gives us a base map and then it loads our map right on top of it. I can change the base map to a different kind of base map, even none. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. But so this is a GIS, this is a, a graphical representation of a map, right? Mm -hmm. And if you had a different map layer, you could load one underneath one. So there's one that's kind of showing the, the surrounding area. but. Here's our map and we could zoom in on the handicapped spaces and we have our trees and we have our buildings, we have rocks, we have everything that, that was there. Excellent, excellent map. So what could you do with this map or what would you do with this map? Maybe some... Right, well, say we had some area where we wanted to plant some grass. Maybe let's take a measurement off of this. So okay. we're gonna create a new measurement and it says just start adding points to the map. So we're just gonna click around this area and quickly come up with a finished measurement. It's gonna compute that. It says it's 775 square meters. It has a perimeter of 103.8 meters. And then it also is measuring the volume. So you could get a volume of that area if it was say a stockpile of something, or maybe it was a big hole and you wanted to know how much dirt to it would it. take to fill it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Gotcha. We processed this Mini 3 Pro. Right. And then mm -hmm. I've got some bigger drones. Yes. Right. So I was like, hey, let's see how good this stacks up against some of the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. So here's a satellite base map. And then I'm going to load the Mini 3 Pro map on top of it. Yep. And then right on top of that, I'm going to put my M300 P1. This is an $8,000 camera mm -hmm. and it just takes beautiful images. But if you notice, Man, these things line up. I can turn that one off and turn it back on. You see there's a little bit of a shift. Uh-huh. That's what we call geo-reference. So that P1 has an RTK sensor built into it. Mm -hmm. And so it is being tied directly to the ground. Whereas the M Mini 3 Pro, it doesn't have that. So it's using its consumer grade GPS mm -hmm. and getting pretty close. Yeah. So people can still get a pretty decent map without buying a, a tremendously expensive drone and without spending a dollar, right? Without spending a dollar, you can do it. If you've got any kind of drone, there's still one more cool thing to do. This is a 3D model that was built. So this is yeah, a 3D point that. cloud generated with the Mini 3 Pro. And that is really cool.
Well, there you have it. We made an easy map using the Mini 3 Pro. And if you wanna learn more about mapping in general, Jared has some courses that he's taught on pilotinstitute.com and a new course as well, right, Jared? Right, that LiDAR course just released this week. So be sure to check that out. We also did a few extended modules for the existing mapping course. If you've already purchased the course, you can go back and look at that extra content as well. That's right. All of this is just increasing your knowledge step-by-step step along the way to make you a great mapper. And uh, that's it. Thanks for your time, Jared. Appreciate it. All right. We'll see you in the next video. It's like the baker. Mix it all together, put it in the oven. Guess what? I already baked one before. Here it is. It's beautiful. Bam. Bam. <laughs>